importing models into your game is one of the most basic yet important things you can do. Here's how to correctly import models into Godot and how to use them. Godot likes to use GLTF to work with 3D models, which is a somewhat new, open source format that supports both materials and animations, just like FBX. It also allows you to import directly from Blender files. Just put the .blend file into your project, and it is ready to use. Using Blender files may look convenient, but it is also very easy to override your files by mistake, and it will take longer to import them. It will also use the whole Blender scene, which makes managing things a bit more complicated. A common mistake is having a light inside Blender, making the whole game white when you bring the object into the scene. You can manually select the objects you don't want to import, or you can rename the light with dash no imp to have them be ignored on import automatically. Godot also allows you to import FBX files by setting up an external FBX to GLTF converter. Just follow the link, download the file, and link its path. Godot will now automatically import FBX files by converting them to GLTF format. The reason for not having a native FBX importer is that FBX is a proprietary format that needs a proprietary SDK to open it, and Godot, being a non-profit open source project, can't ship with it. Both previous methods will work, but it's not the recommended way to import 3D assets into Godot, as they can be slower and harder to manage. The best way to work with 3D assets is just to use the officially supported GLTF format. So, let's take a look at that now. Select the object you want to export, go into File, Export, GLTF. GLTF has three formats. GLB, which is the GLTF binary format, it is the most efficient and it is the smallest. GLTF separate, which uses a plain text format for objects in a separate .bin for the mesh info, while bringing the textures into a separate folder. And GLTF, which uses a full plain text file, it is the largest and usually not recommended to be used in games. In most cases, you want to use the GLB format, so let's choose that. Open the Include tab and select Selected Objects Only, to only export the objects you have selected. Inside the Data tab, open the Mesh section. Make sure Apply Modifiers is selected, to apply all Blender modifiers before exporting the model. In the Materials section, you can leave materials to export, and images to automatic. This will embed all the textures inside the GLB file. If your models don't share texture, you could use this, but there is a more efficient way to deal with it. Let's select this for now and come back to it later. Having done that, you can save the changes by clicking on the plus button on the top. You can now click the operator presets and quickly reset all the options to the full values, or load the changes you just made. Save the file, and drag it into the game. Godot will automatically extract the textures inside the GLB file, and you can now drag the model into your game. You can double-click the GLB file to make changes to its import settings. Here you can change how the model will be imported to Godot. All imported models meshes will be inside the root node, and you can change its type here. Godot uses the minus Z axis for its camera forward direction, which would be Blender's plus Y. So if you want to follow that, you will need to rotate your object to face Blender's plus Y and apply its rotation. But you don't need to. The way you would get the node forward direction in Godot is by using transform.basis, so you can keep your models the way they are and just use a positive transform.basis.z when trying to get its direction. The only reference of minus z being the forward direction in code is the vector3.forward constant, and the look at function, which also uses a minus z as forward. But Godot also gives you an optional parameter called useModelFront that will treat plus z as forward instead. Now let's take a look at exporting multiple models. We will be using plus z as forward, which means Blender's minus y axis. You can select the transform tool and choose local to see each of the object's local rotations to check their directions. Here, the shield forward direction is pointing forward but the spear forward direction is pointing up. Let's select both objects and export them like before, and drag them into your game. Here we have a problem. Godot extracted the textures inside the GLB files, but as we have the same material and texture for both, now we have duplicate textures for each model. Let's fix this. Open a model that contains a shared texture. Under Actions, select Extract Materials. This will create a Godot resource material, and we can use that for all the objects that share that material. Here you can select which materials to extract. We only have one, so let's use that and extract it. Click on Reimport to save the changes. We now have a material we can share with all the other models. To do that, open the model. In the Materials tab, select the material, and enable Use External, and select the extracted material. Go back into the Scene tab, and under GLTF, change Embedded Image to 
Discard all textures, to avoid recreating the textures after we delete them. Press Reimport to save the changes. Having done that, you can now remove the duplicated textures extracted from the model. Now let's finally take a look at our models. Let's select editable children so we can take a look inside. And enable local transforms so we can see each of the object's local rotations. The shield inside is still pointing forward. And the spear is pointing up. Like we expected. Our imported models in Godot will always be parented inside the root node, even for single mesh objects. The object's local rotations you get in Blender are only for the mesh instances inside that root node. Although we are using a shared material, the GLB files still contain textures inside them, but we can fix that too. Let's export another object. But now, inside the data material tab, set images to none. This will still create the materials, but it will not embed the images inside the GLB file. Putting that model inside our game, it will have no texture. So we will have to again open the model, set up our shared material and re-import it. And now the textures are working. Let's export an animated model this time. Here we have a simple beetle model with a few animations. First, we need to make sure the end keyframe is bigger than the longest animation, or it will cut that animation when exporting. Next, we can rename our action name with a dash loop suffix. This will automatically configure our animation player inside Godot to have that animation looped. Now let's export it. Select both the mesh and the armature. You can also do that by right-clicking the object and choosing Select Hierarchy. Go to File, Export, GLTF. Make sure selected object is still enabled, as well as apply modifiers. Under the Armature tab, make sure Actions is selected. This will export each action as an animation. And under Data, Armature, you can enable Export Deformation Bones only. This will make sure the only bones that deform the mesh are exported. Under Material, let's set the image back to automatic to embed it inside it, as it is a unique texture for that model. Let's save it and bring it into Godot now. Opening the model, you'll see that it already comes with an animation player, and all our animations are in there. You can change the loop mode of the animations by clicking on them and changing the loop mode on the right side. Here you can see our animations are still working. And the walk animation is already being looped, as shown by this icon. Also note that these animations can't be changed, as they are inside the GLB files. If you want to change them, you'll need to save them to a file first. That's why you need to change the loop mode from the inside import settings. Now let's finally use our model. You can change your model's properties by creating an inherited scene of it. Click on the scene icon and choose New Inherited. This will open a new, unsaved scene that is inheriting from the model's GLB file. Here, you can freely add nodes and change properties of the model nodes. After making your changes, save the new scene. If you want to change the root node of the model, instead of changing its type, you can open the GLB file and change its root type. After re-importing it, you'll notice that your inherited scene root node will also change, without breaking your modifications. That is because it's linked to the GLB file. Now back to our scene, we need to delete the old model, and use the new scene we just created. And that's it! You can use your 3D models by importing them as GLTF files and create inherited scenes to modify them. So if you need to update your models later, your changes won't be lost. I hope this video helps, thanks for watching, and until next time.